What's good, y'all? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we got to check out Jim Cornette's review of The Rock slapping the dog piss out of Cody Rose at the WWE WrestleMania 40 kickoff. I've been looking forward to seeing what Jim Cornette has to say about this whole entire situation. So, when I saw that uh, this video had just dropped, I was like, you know what? I definitely wanted to check this out because I'm really interested to see how he feels about how things transpired during the kickoff show. Should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. You guys have been running it up on the likes, running it up on the comments and the subscriptions. So thank y'all so much uh, for everyone that's just newly subscribed. And uh, let's get right into this one. Not even going to waste no more time. This should definitely uh, be a pretty good one. I'm going to see what he has to say. We got to what we had all been waiting for, the main event of the main event, the main event of the press conference to determine the main event, even though there was no press conferring. Yeah. <laughs> Seth comes out and he calls out Cody to make his decision that he's been demanding and he gets Roman instead. And there's Seth and Roman go face to face. And I was thinking at this point, Plumber Moxley must be ready to jump off the bridge between Kentucky and Ohio. <laughs> no way. I'm going face to face with Hatchichero. He was in the group with these two guys. And now these two guys are the two standard bearers of the biggest company in the world. And the plumber is having bad matches with fucking <laughs> outlaw talent on the <laughs> B show. And, and here's the crazy thing. We, you can tell John loves what he's doing. John Moxley, that, that the WWE system, it didn't really fit for him. Maybe if triple H was probably booking the shows, maybe John would have stayed a little bit longer. But because Triple H wasn't really booking the shows and, you know, he was kind of frustrated with creative, which understandably what they were doing to him on the way out when he didn't want to resign was they were trying to bury this guy. But he's he's enjoying what he's doing in AEW. I may not be the biggest fan of his matches. You know, he has some solid matches in AEW. I may not be the biggest fan of, you know, what he does in the majority of his matches, but I can respect the fact that he's happy. You can tell he's happy doing whatever he's doing in AEW, having the type of matches that he's having. He's okay with it. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters in the grand scheme of things. If you're happy, then you're going to you're gonna do whatever you want to do, and you're going to continue to keep doing that. I don't think him going back to WWE brings him that type of joy it may have had when he initially got there. Um, I don't know. You never know. Things can happen, but I think... He'll probably end up retiring in AEW, most likely. I get to sit next to my wife on the plane. In fact, she doesn't take her eyes off me the whole time. Dope. <laughs> I mean, that's dope that he gets to do that. I'm not talking about that's what she might be looking for. I don't want anyone to misconstrue that. <laughs> what? That, that... <laughs> no one was construing that. <laughs> well. Oh, my God, bro. Anyway, so. Where did that come from? Roman. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> you mother... All right. Eh. <laughs> anyway, so then... Roman says, Hey, you know what? Cody Rhodes, like a lot of people, when they hesitate, the moment passes. It's my decision now. And I choose The Rock. Mm -hmm. And the fans boo. I'm, mm -hmm. of course, I'm there. They took more time than this, but I'm getting to the meat of the matter. Mm -hmm. Roman, again, cuts a great promo and he seems so natural, but he's, he's, they've already sloughed off Cody and now it's, he, I choose the rock. I'm going to fight the rock and the fans boo and the rock music plays and the fans boo the rock. Mm -hmm. But you could tell in this one, is it, here's the thing. The reason why that we believe that this was not their original plan, besides the fact that it's pretty obvious it wasn't their original plan, mm -hmm. before Punk got hurt, before Brock became a goddamn pariah, before <laughs> The Rock decided he was going to get this $30 million and decided, hey, I can save the day, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
they were going to go with Rock and or with Roman and Cody. And the, and the Seth reason, and CM Punk. Yeah. Yes. And the reason why that you can point back to they have done a masterful pivot. The pivoting is about to begin here. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that they couldn't wipe out completely, they may have even left the wiggle room on purpose. I don't know. But the, the only thing they can't wipe out completely that was said on live TV mm -hmm. was when Cody said, I am going to finish the story, but not at WrestleMania. But not at WrestleMania. And, you know, now they can, uh, I think they're ignoring that completely, or if they don't, <clears throat> they might try to close that loophole up with saying, well, it's not going to be completely finished or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. But it looks pretty obvious that's what they were going to do until the backlash made them rethink their strategy. And then I think The Rock with some egg on his face tried to turn as the person whose name we're not allowed to speak anymore used to say, turn a negative into a positive mm -hmm. and figure out a way where he can again say, well, cause you know, he had heavy input in this. Mm -hmm. So he's probably tried to figure out the way, well, we can do it like this. And it's like, we meant to do it all along and I'll be a heel because now he gets a chance to, I mean, every great star, or actor, or wrestling star, or whatever, at one point wants to be the villain. Yeah. It's so fun he to gets be the to villain. do that, but it wasn't what they were originally expectifying. No. And, and this is kind of to expound on this point and reason why I still believe this is more or less an audible that they're going to try to angle as a work. Because like Jim said, they left a little bit of wiggle room. The only problem is Cody did say on live TV that he wasn't going to finish the story at WrestleMania unless there's something that comes out, a bigger truth that we start to see being planted. That's the only way you can kind of make that work where it makes sense as best as you possibly can. It's still in the grand scheme of things doesn't make sense even if you have Cody secretly in line with The Rock undercover to try to infiltrate the bloodline still is one of those things where they could possibly find a way to turn it into this makeshift work we will see but overall i do still believe firmly this was an audible they switched things up when they realized the backlash was it was too overwhelming and the match was going to be doa as soon as they had this at wrestlemania the crowd was going to shit on it We'll go into the different theories later on, but they did hear what the smartest thing to do for professional wrestling is. Lean into what's working. There we go. Despite, and this is something that WWE traditionally has not done well. Nope. They've ignored fan reaction because they have a story they want to get to their mm -hmm. way. Lean into it. They leaned into what was, I mean, as hot a wrestling chatter online as there was. I mean, the interest in this stuff blew up. Mm -hmm. So they could have screwed it up. Instead, they made everything better Yeah, on this event, this WrestleMania kickoff. I mean, I'll let you go back to reviewing it, but they leaned into it, they pivoted, and they did everything right. Yep. Well, you could tell that Rock was coming out with a completely different objective because of the expression on his face mm -hmm. and the way he walked out on this one as opposed to the previous what... Uh, as he as he appeared twice now, surprise the, pops. The two surprise pops yeah. he got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but also, and this wasn't even a real. I won't say a real crowd, but this wasn't a, a ticket purchasing crowd at a house show or a TV taping. This was a last minute thing put together. There and there were a lot of rock chants more than there were when the ticket purchasing patrons were involved. So, you couldn't get a. You can't do a. You know fair comparison but just his as howard finkel bless him you say his demeanor the expression on his face his body language the way he walked and moved mm -hmm. from the start when he came out and the way he was reacting to the booze yeah you could tell that he was out there his objective was to he knew he was going to slap cody in the face he wanted him to boo but he wanted 
to show that he was getting more and more ticked off by this disrespect that he was getting not only from the people, but then mm -hmm. when it came from Cody, mm -hmm. is his motivation if he's done the acting lessons, right? That was his motivation for his character. <laughs> but it, he did a great job of it because last week, he came out and showed his arm on the camera on, on the handheld where he had goosebumps from the cheers of all the people. Yeah. And now they're booing him and he's getting surly about it. So this was when they had between last Friday night and what, and the stuff that happened over the weekend, and then Monday's reactions, they had put this together and now this, he knew this is what he had to fucking do. And mm -hmm. wherever they're going from here, as you said, a lot better fucking than we thought we were going to get. And we probably were going to get. And here's the crazy thing. I'm going to stand by this statement. If Vince McMahon's in control still at the time, if Vince was in control when this was happening, I'm guaranteeing you this, the match would have stayed the same. Most likely the match would have stayed the same, Rock versus Roman. He wouldn't have changed it. No matter how many, how many times have we seen that, no matter how many boos and people didn't want to see it, he kept the match the same. And overall, it you can say it kind of messed up matches, WrestleMania main events. That main event with, um, I want to say, Brock versus Roman, I think that was, it was right around the time when they were trying to push Roman as this super baby face and they, I think they called an audible because I think a lot of us expected uh, Roman to win at that WrestleMania, but they booed the crap out of that match because no one cared. It was the main event. Even Brock, I mean, Brock busted open Roman Reigns and still no one cared. I think that was the WrestleMania where Brock ended up throwing the title at Vince uh, behind the curtain because the match was just no one cared. No one wanted to see it. So they shit on the match, people booed, no one was cheering, it was a waste of everybody's time. And I think this is a situation where if Vince was in control, he probably would have did the same thing. So. And the people were chanting, you know, uh, we want Cody. And then there, but there'd be a, a smaller, you know, response. We want Cody, Cody sucks. We want Cody, Co and one guy in the back, Rocky, Rocky, mm -hmm. some fucking drunk. But it, it it went at a snail's pace for a while because Rock was letting the people react and just milking it. And, you know, he asked if the people will Rock versus Roman Reigns be the biggest match ever, and they booed. Mm -hmm. oh, Rock loves the passion. And he tried to talk again. They start chanting, we want Cody. Mm -hmm. And that's when he introduces everybody to the Cody, Cody crybabies. Because there is a, some segment of the audience, right, that, that likes Cody. He introduced that phrase on Pat McAfee's show where he kind of went heel and was lashing yes. out a little bit, somewhat in character at the fans. He calls them the Cody crybabies. Maybe not the most creative thing, but... He's an anabolic asshole. What do you expect? <laughs> That's how you do it. But he had Gewurz there with him. He had Nick Khan with him, and he pointed them out. So they're leaning into the idea that here's the rock. They're leaning into reality. Here's yeah. the yeah. rock and all of his influence and all of his fluffers and stooges all getting hooked up. They're leaning into yes. it, and that's mm -hmm. smart. It's good. And, well, and boy, by the time we get to SmackDown. But, uh, and then that's when he popped the family tree up on the screen mm -hmm. and the crowd started wanting the rock. And I'm like, yeah. this, is, this is fucking great. Who would have ever thought? Yeah. But he worked with it. And that's the crazy thing. And then, uh, I don't know. I'm sure people noticed that, but when's the last time you've ever seen the rock in the past 10 plus years, since he's been making his appearances on the show sporadically, when's the last time you've seen him get what it, before, like after he went Hollywood and you know came back as a heel, they would what him then. But I'm talking about when he was gone for a while and he came back and everyone loved to see him. When's the last time you seen him get whatted on a can like throughout the entire promo that he's given? That should let you know when fans start doing that. And sometimes fans just do that because they're bored 
with a particular segment or they don't really care or whatever. But this is different. They're actively wanting this guy because they don't give a shit what he has to say. And I thought that was very interesting. And they're really playing up into his heel like persona. And I'm all for it. I'm all for it, man. Because the the quick ones do. And the tree pops up on the screen, and he said there's only one royal family in professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. And they showed the lineage where his and Roman's grandfather were blood brothers. Yeah, when, when did when did we ever hear that before? Have you ever heard that beginning of the story? I always heard Alpha and Seeker <laughs> were fans of Peter Maivia that went to the Cow Palace. Well, yes. Did you ever hear that their grandfathers made a blood oath? No. <laughs> But okay. <laughs> I didn't even notice was Nef Mayava on there. He's really the person who should um, be at the top, right? Because he was the one who influenced Peter Maivia to become Peter Maivia. Nef was not invited. And for the people now, we've gone for the younger listeners. We, we're just speaking gibberish now <laughs> and taking it one at a time. Afa and Sika Anawahi were two Samoan fans in the Cow Palace days, San Francisco in the mid sixties or late say whenever it was that were so not only badass but also such huge fans of Chief Peter Maivia that they would try to beat the shit out and succeed in beating the shit out of the heels <laughs> on the way back from the fucking matches after hot finishes and so finally they had to smarten them up and and break them into the business off and seek it to keep them from killing the fucking boys. Can you imagine you're wrestling Peter Maivia and as soon as you leave the ring, there's just giant Samoan fans punching you as you try to yes, get to the and, locker room? Damn. And somebody look at look at a picture of what Afa and Sika looked like in 1972 Damn. or whatever instead of today and figure out what that would have been like. And Peter Maivia, whose real name was on the family tree, was... Uh, Funny uh, Anderson, correct? Correct. And but when he <clears throat> got into wrestling, there had only been one really if, uh, uh, Samoan wrestler of any kind of fame who had been Nef Maiva, spelled slightly differently. But the people who named Peter Maivia, Peter Maivia, didn't know how to spell it, and it became Maivia, and he got much more over anyway. And then that was when you thought of. A Samoan in wrestling from the early 60s on, you thought of Peter Maivia. And apparently now, maybe as a condition of it, maybe Maivia went to Alpha and Sika's father and said, Hey, I'll train these fucking kids of yours and make them money in the wrestling business if they won't kill all of our <laughs> heels and you and I could be blood brothers. Yeah, maybe. They also left off like 20 of Soul Man's kids from the uh, lineage up there. Yeah, well, there, there, there was... <laughs> the many, many illegitimate children of Rocky Johnson all over the place. And legitimate. There, 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 was, there was never any complete proof of that, was there? Uh, other than DNA um, and... No, nothing, no. Well, no, you know, but... Uh, but you know, they didn't have room on the giant Titan Tron. But nevertheless... The, <laughs> it's a good concept, the though. Anawahi like, getting away from... my via branches. Yeah, getting away from the reality of it. It was a good... Mm -hmm. For the way things went, mm -hmm. and kind of the rock leaning into the Will Smith thing of don't say anything about my family or I'll yeah. slap you. Yeah. yeah. It made sense, because you had to get from the rock and Roman being at each other to them yeah. being on the same side, and it worked. Yep, and that that introducing that family tree, it just lets you know, okay, they're 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 leaning into the fact of they feel like they're they're the only wrestling family that matters. It's a clear dig at Cody and his family lineage, and they're saying, hey, this is the match that matters. This is d damn what y'all feel like, damn what the fans feel like, the Cody crybabies or whatever you want to say. This is the match that matters the most. This is the match that's going to make us the most money. This is the biggest match we can put on. Cody, you had your time. Now it's my time. I like that. I like that he's trying to assert himself and the reasons why that match needs to happen because of his family. And he feels like his family is the only family that really matters in wrestling. Talking about the Rock, and, of course. And that's and the Roman. thing is there were so many names there and you you saw enough of them if you freeze-framed it, and I'm sure a bunch of the video technicians out there did and tried to read. It was legitimate in terms of not only a lot of the, or all of the wrestlers or wrestling 
connected family members, but just the the rest of the family members, not including everybody, as you mentioned, but mm -hmm. the acknowledge the official ones. And down at the bottom was Jacob Fatu. Mm -hmm. That was interesting that they included so his hope. name because mm -hmm. there were names that were not on there. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's name who had been in wrestling from that family, I don't think, was on there. I, th I couldn't find it. I didn't get a shot of everything. So was I Manu? See everything. I didn't look for Manu, my favorite of I, uh, all the obscure ones was. that popped up. I did that. I right. thought I saw it. I got to check. But Jacob Fatu was mm -hmm. pretty prominent because it was towards the bottom. So it was almost close to yeah. the. Uh, where the the head of the person talking in front of it would be, he's a free agent. Mm -hmm. I guess Booker T's helping him out, mm -hmm. and they're saying that he wants to sign somewhere, and he can work. Oh boy, howdy! Whew. But anyway, so be very interesting. New ownership may not care about legal issues the way Vince did. I mean, UFC has plenty of reprobates on their roster, don't they? Yes, mm -hmm. well, including the Dana White. It, yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, honey, come here. Power <laughs> slap. There's no problem. <laughs> hey, honey, come here. <laughs> we gotta listen to that again, bro. What the fuck? Some of it would be. He's a free agent. I guess Booker T's helping him out, oh and they're saying God. that he wants to sign somewhere, and he can work. Oh boy, howdy. Oh my God. But anyway, so. New ownership may not care about legal issues the way Vince did. Oh, I mean, UFC Jim has plenty of reprobates on their roster, don't they? Yes. Well, including the Dana White. You know, hey, honey, come here. Power slap. There's no problem there. So anyway, but then The Rock versus Roman Reigns is the biggest WrestleMania match ever. That's what The Rock is saying. If you don't think that, it doesn't matter, matter what, what you, you think. think. Yeah blah 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 and the rock and roman reigns do the handshake and and a slight hug and then suddenly cody with no music and no introduction cody just comes out on stage and says no 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 this is bullshit this is bullshit and love gets it. a huge fucking pop yeah i love that love and that Love that. And now suddenly that Cody has come out and is addressing him, Rock switches over and is standing on the side with Roman Reigns and Paul mm -hmm. Heyman. And Cody fires up and says, hey, the choice is mine. I won the Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. And my decision is at WrestleMania 40, I choose Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. And that got a big pop. And here now here comes Aldous and Pierce and Triple H are running out. And Roman has said, you're old news. Go to the loser bracket. Nobody cares, right? Blah, blah, blah. Rollins hanging in the back the whole time, paying yeah. attention. Seriously. Yes. And I thought that added a lot to this. And he's technically, even though he's hanging back, he's on Cody's side over there. Mm -hmm. And as, as Roman is knocking Dusty then, mm -hmm. Cody fires back and says, hey, your family, oh, your family are yes men and goons. And if your grandfather or Peter Maivia would be here, they would be here now. They'd be ashamed of you. Mm -hmm. And then the Rock steps up Ooh. to Cody. Oh no! Wait a minute. When you talk about his family, you're talking about mine. You talk about his blood. You're talking about my blood. Mm -hmm. So now we have a problem. problem. Yep. This and is Rock so... hauls off and slaps Cody. Ooh, slaps him right in his face. That's, Will, that's Will Smith. I think that's where yes. he got that from. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> he did. Might be the closest Rock comes to the Oscar ceremony again these days. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm a bad influence on you. Well, you are. But I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know he's going to get nominated for this work, but it's going to draw some money. Max. But so that he slaps Cody and everybody reacts and Heyman was fucking they got freeze frames mm -hmm. on Twitter of Heyman's face. It yep. was incredible. <laughs> he hit the and Oh my god. <laughs> so now that and they're trying to hold Cody back and he's taken out and Seth leaves, you know, with him and Rock stays out on the stage with Roman and Paul and they go to 
the announcers to try to make sense of this. And did you notice that Big E said, I don't what what are we trying to set up here? A, a tag? <laughs> all of a sudden you see on his face, somebody told him in his ear, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Or you're fucking fired. Cause they didn't want to lead him down that road yet. So there is no more mention of that, but I love it when he, because he hasn't had any experience with me. What are we trying to build here? <laughs> I thought Big E was kind of really good on this because he was reacting almost as if there was no headset for everything the whole time they asked him. He was giving real reactions or real thoughts, or at least they seemed like it. Mm. So it was well, really yeah, in this case, he really was confused. <laughs> he didn't yeah. know what the fuck was going on. And Triple H set up the tag match at the very beginning when he was going over the history of the first WrestleMania and how it was a tag match there. Mm -hmm. And. The other thing about the desk, McAfee was fine. Michael Cole did really well. CM At the Punk. very end, especially, CM Punk stole the show <laughs> stole because the of two things. Show. One, so good. CM Punk talking about how someone slapped you, I would punch him right in the, in face. the face. And The yes. Rock is in the background on the mm -hmm. stage without a microphone. <laughs> and you see his reaction instantly when he hears what Punk says. Mm -hmm. And then he, you just see him mouthing things at Punk. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was so good. And then I Punk, went back to that. Cause I'm, I was like, it looked like The Rock heard what he said, so <laughs> it was, it, and it's and it funny because he was like, man, that couldn't have been me, pretty much. Like, you know, who wants to see Cody punch Rock in the face? Like, and you can, you know, it sounds like you could kind of hear it a little bit more, uh, you know, audible, like a little bit louder in the in the in the arena because they probably had it hooked up to some type of system. But you can see The Rock looking at him when he announced that or said that. And I thought that was a very good touch. He didn't have a microphone, but you can, you know, CM Punk is really just addressing what he would have done. So I, I did like that touch. And, you know, they obviously have history as well with Rock coming in and kind of pretty much uh, dethroning CM Punk at uh, I think at that year's, uh, I think it was at that year's Royal Rumble to set up a match between... Uh, I think it was set up a match, a rematch between The Rock and um, John Cena. So, you know, they have history, too, as well. So, but this was this was definitely good. Talking about his theories of punching people in the face. <laughs> well, yeah, because because now they're saying, well, hey, you know, The Rock's on the board of directors. You mm -hmm. know, he technically he's, uh, the you know, the boss of it. And, and Punk says, well, I don't care if it's me. <laughs> As somebody fucking slaps me, if it's my boss, I'm whipping everybody's ass. Facts. <laughs> oh, my God. So that good. was, again, so good. for the... For the fans, for those who know, they know. Yeah, they know. So Punk but, was really good. I thought the panel was really good, and it worked well the way they used it, but that wasn't the end because then we get Triple H in the back. Yep. Well, and that's the thing is the panel is killing time, and you think they're wrapping up, and then they do go to Triple H in the back, the ramp leading to you know the parking area, whatever. And right as he started to talk, well, you know, you've got these guys who are just, they've just lost control. Here comes Rock and Roman and Heyman mm -hmm. walking together. Well, Heyman toadying in the back. And they pass Triple H and the Rock says, fix it. Yep. Fix this or we will. And there was some, he said, some fucking guy he used the F word and they mm -hmm. bleeped that. And, it, you know, and they walk off together. So now it's Rock and Roman in some Crazy. kind of super... <laughs> tribal summit jeez bro and he has slapped Cody Rhodes in the face we have been promised Cody versus Roman at Wrestlemania mm -hmm. and as we'll talk about when we get to Smackdown the uh, they're now teasing the fact that The Rock has pull but that there there's uh, Triple, Triple H is going to push back on the pull mm -hmm. and and you got CM Punk out there saying this was a quote, personal issues can be solved when men fight. Facts. And that's what everybody wants to see is all these fuckers fighting each other. Yeah. This was a fantastic event. Great. It left great. you wanting more, wanting yeah. to see what's going to happen. I will say, I hope they don't go too heavy into bad authority figure versus good authority figure. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how they're going to, thread the needle to get to WrestleMania, but this is incredibly promising. Heel Rock, you also have to be careful he doesn't overshadow Roman. 
Yeah. Because how's Roman the leader of the bloodline if the rock is right next to him, unless mm-hmm. rock says you're the leader. Mm-hmm. But this is great stuff. Well, they may have to still settle that later on, but in the meantime, their family has been disrespected. So could and the there rock, be... And the Rock in a tag match, less likely to get hurt than in a singles match. <laughs> there you go. But when would that tag team match be? Yeah. One of the nights of WrestleMania, you would think. Well, maybe or maybe not. We don't know what the fuck's going on here, do we, for once? They're not yeah. booked for Elimination Chamber, and that's in a couple of weeks. They're not going to rush something like that, you wouldn't mm-hmm. think. We'll see. I mean, we still don't know well, what I mean, th- any of the main events fluid, for WrestleMania are. It's a fluid situation. Well, we know that Cody Roman gets Coleman. Roman. That's right. But, Cody and but Coleman, this is I a said. fluid Cody situation. Yeah, wh- whatever. Yes, whatever we just said. But this is a fluid situation because they're still making it up as they go along based on the last shit not working. But so far, it's fucking great. Yeah, they they got something. And... And that's one of the things where it's like you can appreciate they actually pivoted, call, called an audible, leaned into the backlash, leaned into people not liking, you know, what you know what they saw happen in the Cody. And they're playing it up. They're playing it up as The Rock, being part of the board of directors, being one of those individuals, he can do whatever he wants because he he feels like his family can do that. He feels like since he's been uh, placed at one of the board as one of the uh, board members, he deserves to be there. So he's going to do whatever it is that's best for his family because he feels like whatever's best for the family is best for WWE. Loved it. Um, This was great. Comment down below. Let me know. Um, Where do you guys think this story is heading, man? There's so much speculation going on, and this is what makes WrestleMania season so great. Because you can speculate and get excited about the potential possibilities. And I'm all for it, man. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still young. Speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.